Good morning. Um, today we're going to do a quick uh, intro to what we're going to be doing in social studies over the next little while. Um, we're going to be looking, our main topic in social studies is history this term, and it's going to be uh, looking specifically at ancient civilizations. So I wanted to just give you a, a brief idea about what that was and what we're, what we're going to be looking at. So basically, ancient civilizations, well, we talk about something that's ancient, we're talking something that's really old. And usually when it comes to ancient civilizations, usually we're looking at a thousand years or more, um, which as you can imagine is pretty old. Uh, so civilizations, when we look at civilizations, well, a civilization is sort of a organized society. But what I want you to do is think a little bit about what characteristics or what things would a group of people need to have in order to be considered a civilization. So that's part of your thinking and homework uh, for the weekend. Um, so in in studying ancient civilizations, we have to look at primary sources. Now, primary sources, I'm going to explain what that is. All the things I showed you the other day, all those artifacts, those are primary sources. A primary source is something that was actually around at the time that the civilization existed. So when I showed you, for example, that toaster, the toaster is an actual artifact that existed and was used in the 1930s. So that gives you an idea, it gives you some insight into what people had to do in order to make toast in the 1930s, which doesn't seem like a big thing, like who cares if they're making toast, but it gives you an idea about what the technology level was like and how much extra work they had to put in into something just as simple as making toast. And chances are that wasn't the only thing that required more effort in doing. So it just gives you a little bit of insight. So some of the things that we are going to be doing is looking at primary sources of ancient civilizations. Now I don't have any actual primary sources, that would be ridiculous, but there's a lot in museums. Uh, when the museums actually open again, I would really encourage you to go to the Royal Ontario Museum because it is a world-class museum that has lots of stuff on ancient civilizations. And if we were in the classroom, and if this COVID thing had not happened, I would have seen about going on a field trip to the Royal Ontario Museum because it was it's a really cool place. Anyway, so something that was actually around at the time of the civilization existed, and it gives us a clear view of what life was like hundreds or even thousands of years ago. All right, so that's sort of um, why primary sources are important. Now, there's also something called secondary sources. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But a secondary source, just briefly, is somebody who writes about something that's a primary source. So, for example, if someone writes a textbook about primary sources, then that is considered a secondary source. It's something, someone talking about that primary source. So that's what a secondary source is. Uh, but you don't need to know that. that well, that's just something for later. So there are lots of primary sources that exist around based on, you know, with when it comes to looking at ancient civilizations. So past history provides us with a picture of past cultures, people of early civilizations left behind cities, monuments, and rich cultures that are important to our life today. All you have to do is look at something like the naming of the planets and how the planets are named after the Greek gods. So Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, all of these planets are originally names that were used thousands of years ago. So that's carried on. Um, so in our unit in civilizations, we're going to study, I think, uh, if we, depending on the time, I, I would like to study three specific civilizations that I think are very important to us, um, both as Canadians, but also in the Western world in general. And it, it, they had a huge influence on how our society has evolved. Um, so the first one I want to look at is the ancient Egyptians. They're probably the most famous of the ancient civilizations, um, the, you know, the Egyptian pyramids, there's a lot, we hear a lot about them all the time. So, so um, uh, that's the first one, or one of the ones we're gonna look at. The, 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 another one we're gonna look at are the ancient Greeks. They were a hugely influential, influential um, society. And then the last one I wanted to look at is indigenous history, which is more the North American ancient civilization. Uh, and if you go and search online for ancient civilizations, this one will not pop up.
And that is really because it hasn't been until recently that as Canadians and as people living in North America that we've realized the importance of looking at Indigenous history and how their history is not only very complicated, quite uh, in depth, but has also had a huge impact on Canadians, on Canadian culture. And of course, the Indigenous people play a huge role in um, in our country today. So, so that's another one I wanted to look at as well. It's often overlooked by uh, people that do websites or textbooks or whatever, but we're not going to overlook it, um, this, this uh, term. So those are the three that we're going to look at. Uh, there are a couple of just thinking questions that I put online um, related to uh, ancient civilizations and the beginnings of ancient civilizations that I want you to have a look at as well. Okay, talk to you later.